pregnant. And we'll start as we always do in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, dear God, thank you for this opportunity to meet together. Please help us to work together to help our sick form is enjoy life in all its fullness. Please life into our ideas and decisions and help us to build a team that has love and respect at its heart. Lord, come give us the inspiration to be the best we can be. May we be a shining example of your goodness and truth within our school. In your name, amen. And the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, so the purpose of this evening is to give you um, a number of updates of big things that are coming up. Um, we'll talk about work experience. We'll talk about UCAS Hub, which is a really good platform to help inform students about next steps. Uh, Mrs. Hepworth will give uh, a UCAS uh, update. Uh, Mrs. Rainsby can't join us tonight, but I'll just share with you a couple of pastoral updates. And um, finally, there'll be a question and answer session where you can unmute yourselves and um, just ask about anything that we might have said or anything that you've got any queries about. So I'll hand straight over to Mrs. Jeffries and just tell me Mrs. Jeffries when to turn the slides over to you. Absolutely. Hi um, and evening folks. Um, OK, so Mr. Shenson's asked me to um, talk to you guys about an opportunity that that's coming up in July, which is a way off. We didn't realise that. But actually, do you know what? It's a good thing to start thinking about this now. Um, so. I don't think there's many schools that do this. We actually give students a full week in July where students can actually plan and participate in work experience. And the dates that we're offering are the week beginning the 4th of July through to the 8th of July. So basically, that's what that really means is that there won't be any lessons on that week. Instead, we're offering students the opportunity to do work experience. Um, I think we have a student that's going to join us um, later on in this presentation. We're going to do it very quickly, really, so that uh, if Joseph is there, he can speak and then get on with this evening. But um, work experience is a fantastic opportunity to really learn firsthand about the career sector um, that you want to go into, potentially, um, and develop something that we call transferable skills. I will talk about that throughout year 12 with our students. The transferable skills are the things that really you can develop that no matter what you go into, they are going to be important for you to be able to demonstrate. So I'm talking about things like problem solving skills, communication, you know, those, those kind of skills that in any job, any interview, anything you go into, you really have to be able to demonstrate. In addition to this, it is true to say that universities and um, future employers value applicants that can really show that they have begun to develop values, the attitudes and the behaviours which are crucial to their chosen career. Um, so it's a good thing. Um, undertaking this work experience opportunity will give you a block of time. And it's rare to be given a block of time that is dedicated to one particular focus. And in this case, it's working and experiencing the work sector environment. And it is a challenge. It definitely is. For some students, we know it's incredibly challenging to be able to put themselves out there and work in those kind of environments. But it's a great opportunity for them as well to develop their knowledge, their skills in that targeted work experience opportunity. So at this point, if Joe is there, hopefully fingers and crossed to the power of technology, he will be there. Joe, um, something a little bit, well, he didn't stay in Doncaster. So he did something a little bit different. I think that's an amazing opportunity and he went some distance. So is Joe, are you there, Joe? It might I really be really sorry uh, joe's mummies <laughs> joe's mummies i saw you i saw sally i saw you on that i don't know if, you, if joe was um nicking your your kind of like your id here so uh, okay sal over to you if you want to talk yeah about no joe really did. really really sorry we're having to juggle a few things this evening so he's had to go and sort out his brother um but yeah it felt quite daunting because you know, as a, as a parent, I'd never sent a child out on work experience before. So although I've worked at the school, this was something completely, completely new and we just didn't know where to start. Um, Joseph wants to do something with physics. So we were thinking about engineering and things like that. But we, we had we had nowhere, no way of knowing how to start. Um, so literally, my husband put something on LinkedIn saying can anyone offer anything you know um, my lad wants to do physics and an engineering company down in Plymouth saw it and and got in touch and they had an absolutely amazing program um, so he went down there fortunately we do have family in Plymouth so he was able to stop with a family member um, and he did the week down there 
designing um i mean their structure was actually really really good they had a there was a number of them there that week and they were given a project to do um which was designing buildings and uh, putting radiators in and ensuring that they were in the right place and the right capacity and, and stuff like that and piping and he, he came back so animated with all his drawings um, and he had an absolutely he had a wonderful time um, really pushed him out of his comfort zone being somewhere that he'd only ever spent a little bit of time in Plymouth itself but obviously never at this engineering company meeting people um, that he'd never met and really fulfilling a really professional role he kept forgetting that it wasn't actually a real project you know they, they were sort of given specific roles and worked as a team on the final day they also did mock interviews and worked on their personal statement as well uh, and it was it was really really good sorry I've not thought about what I want to say what would you like me to say <laughs> To, to be honest, I think that's that's a perfect example, really, Sally. So thank you. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's something else you want um, Sally to talk about, but I think the key thing is, um, I mean, I've known Joseph for a few, for a few years, um, and obviously the fixed form um, worked with him a little bit as well. And um, I think it's marked that the change in Joe, I think his confidence and the direction he's got from this, I think he has a, a much clearer idea about what he wants to do. Um, and having the opportunity, it's a brave thing. I mean, he couldn't have gone much further away, really. Um, no. and luckily you had family down there because that could that could be a challenge but I think really what we want students to be aware of and, and thanks so much for that Sally is that you don't need to just do something local down the road around the corner um, that's convenient I mean yeah absolutely that's absolutely fine to do that but this is an opportunity this is why we're announcing it now that you can really get your thinking cap on and think outside the box because it is a block of time that is rare, you know, it is rare that in curriculum time you have this opportunity. We want you to make the most of this. Um, use the people you know, absolutely. But um, the example you've just given there was somebody, something completely different to Joe, and Joe really thrived in that environment. So that, that's amazing. I mean, um, in, in terms of that, if anyone does have places that they can stay in and around Plymouth, uh, quite happy to pass on the contact details because it was amazing, absolutely amazing. And it's probably where his brother will go. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that's amazing. Bye. Thanks, Sally. Thank you very much. I know you got um, a busy Thank weekend, you, Sally. So Oh, really you. valuable. Bye. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. So the the transferable skills really, the experiences that you can develop, are the things that are going to stand you the test of time throughout whatever you go into. Um, certainly interviews for university is a starting point but beyond that as well so we're looking at things like developing students communication skills team working skills time management and problem solving and i think the experience that um, joe had working away so far away from home really has um, opened up his eyes to a big world outside of doncaster which is um good a very good thing for students so give an example of the kind of things you might want to do you know for example you might have developed great communication skills when working um, with individuals on work placement and when you go to university you can actually say that these skills are essential and they are transferable to whatever career opportunity you go into there's an example at the bottom of the screen you don't have to necessarily find work experience in the job sector that you want to go into it could be great if you can but it's not absolutely essential because whatever you do whatever you manage to um, source for yourself these skills are transferable in every sector of work so the last thing i want to kind of like say um it's trying to be just change the, the screen for me that'd be great is start these conversations now start thinking about things um like i said already there will be no lessons during that week um and many students do use their initiative they do do this themselves but um you know start the process thinking about wex wex is work experience early on it's no bad thing and start talking to people and having a think you know about who you know and what businesses or what opportunities you might be able to get involved in and in contrast there are always some students that don't get themselves organized um, and it can seem a little bit quite frustrating for us at school that it's almost like a wasted opportunity and we want to avoid that, which is why we're talking about this in March. Um, good hints and tips really, ideas for work experience can come from you as family members, friends, teaching staff and form tutors. You know, if you're really not sure where, start the conversation, just plant a seed and have a think about things. The key message is be proactive now, get the planning started, 
some, some sectors will require you to have a DBS and very often work placements will pay those for you, but it takes time. A DBS, if you're not sure, is actually having a criminal record check, um, especially if you're working with people that are vulnerable. It might be a requirement of a work placement in advance. It's not something you can sort out the night before. Um, and nearer to the time, we are in 6 one going to do a bit of an audit, check that everybody has the placements um, so that you um, know where you're going, we know where you're going, because there are some documents that we'll need you to complete. Um, it's simple things, but it actually is all part and parcel of making sure that safeguarding and health and safety checks are done before you start this placement. So you need to know where you're going so all this can be completed. And just a few things, WEX is not an extension of a part-time job. We welcome and we encourage students to get part-time jobs. It's certainly part and parcel of managing time. But if you have a current job at McDonald's, um, we're not expecting you, and it won't be something we, we agree to, that you go and you work a full week at McDonald's. That's not that. This is something that you do outside of your part-time job that's developing um, different types of skills um, and work-based. And it's not something we expect you to get payment for. Um, and you will be required to complete a logbook as evidence of this. It's a good thing to do to document what you've done, but also when you are applying for university, it's always a good thing to look back and find out, um, you know, look at the information that you recorded at the point of time. Um, so really my message is start thinking now really, um, and then we are here to help you and guide you, but it is um, something we'd like you to start having on your, your list of things to talk about at home. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gent. I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. That's a really, really thorough um, guide on, on what's uh, coming up. And I can't stress enough what Mrs. Jeffries said about starting conversations uh, now, because so many of those really good placements came from just those really um, odd moments, those informal conversations with family and friends. Uh, we had another girl, um, that wants to do engineering and she was talking to her uh well a maths teacher that she doesn't have it was a teacher that she knew from gcse's just in conversation and that particular teacher knew somebody in an engineering company and um that young lady went off to to join that company for the week and that company um has got back in touch with our student and is very interested in helping her with her next steps um, whether it's going to be a, a university degree or a apprenticeship or degree apprenticeship type of thing. So um, if you get the conversation started now, then uh, all, all the better. And you'll be surprised what might might come up. Uh, plenty of chance for um, asking questions later if you have any on that. Um, so thank you again, Mrs. Jeffries. That's great. The next part of the presentation is, is me. And I'd like to promote this a really excellent platform that's called UCAS Hub. Um, I'll just explain its features, but um, it, when many of us who, uh, many of you who might have had children that have gone through school previously, associate UCAS with universities and colleges admission service. Um, however, the UCAS Hub is not just for university and colleges. It's actually a pathways service, which has information about all sorts of other pathways, including apprenticeships, conservatoire degree apprenticeships, graduate training programmes and such like. So it's a one stop shop for all manner of different ideas for moving uh, students forward. So you can explore all sorts of different things, uh, including gap years as well, uh, but it also provides information on university specific things like the UCAS tariff point system, uh, university finance and other types of experiences. Uh, I mean, the, the main thing here is uh, register and have a browse. But what I will do is point out a few things which I think are really useful for both students and parents. So first of all, um, there is a registration page. Um, so once you've registered, you can do all sorts of things like put in some of your lines of inquiry at the moment. So if you've got an interest in law or criminology and you know whatever other career pathways, you can put those in and they can send you notifications um, of things that are coming up. Uh, it might include um, open days, it might include master classes, residentials, apprenticeships in those lines of work and so on. 
So, and it is free, it's completely free. Now, the site itself is subdivided into various sections along the top. Um, there's a discover uh, section and there's undergraduates, apprenticeships and careers. And really have a browse through, through any of it. Um, not going to uni, we sometimes wrap that word up as just basically any career opportunity or pathways opportunity that doesn't involve university. Um, historically, in the, in the Macaulay sick form, the majority of students do go to university, but we do feel that they've made a really informed decision. Uh, we certainly don't promote that as being the only way of mo moving on from sick form. It just happens that when students do A-levels, one of the um, most common pathways is to do A-levels and then go to university. So um, I just want to say that you know, we're not pushing university at all, but this hub does cover a lot of different types of um, pathway. So um, on here, there's, there's a careers quiz, which is really interesting. Um, and there's an explore section, so you can look at potential job roles. There's all sorts of videos on there. So just have a browse, click on them and just see what, you know, um, a biomedicine course might involve or what is mechanical engineering? Um, how do you get into law, for example? Law is a great um, uh, profession, of course, but there's lots of ways into it these days. You can go through university, you can get graduate training programmes, degree apprenticeships and all sorts of things. Um, Mrs. Hepworth may touch on some of that when she speaks to you later. But there's also loads of advice on what employers are looking for and how to write a CV. So it's a really, really good site for students and parents. This section uh, called the ultimate guides um, are really good. Uh, so these are subject guides and you can have a look at you know, particular sectors. But you can also have a look at what sort of regions and cities you might want to study in and you can filter out careers and apprenticeships and so on as well. So that's all through the Discover tab on the site and you'll see all of these little tabs coming up um, that you can just uh, browse around. John Keats, very famous person, had this quote, nothing ever becomes real till it is experienced. Um, and nothing can be more true, really. And in this day and age, uh, employers are very often looking for people that have got some experience of some sort. And of course, apprenticeships do offer the opportunity to earn while you learn. Uh, you can get degrees through apprenticeships. And of course, you, you're developing all that experience as you go along. So that apprenticeship section gives you lots of advice. Um, it will tell you, for example, the difference between apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships. Uh, why an apprenticeship might be right for you, what to expect in an apprenticeship, how long they last typically, and application processes. And I've taken these images straight from the UCAS hub uh, just in recent days. You can see there, there's a lot of things you can click on and browse, browse by industry, um, find your ideal career. This just unlocks a whole load of other things to look at. So how parents can help. Uh, the first thing is really to familiarise yourself with the UCAS hub well before the UCAS process formally opens in May. Um, there's research is everything, isn't it? Just keep your eyes wide open, have a look at lots of different um, opportunities within the site. Um, and the biggest advice I would give to parents actually is, um, I, I mean, my my son's uh, in year 11 now, and um, it, it's a little bit hard with our older children to find time to be together. Uh, but I think this is a good opportunity maybe to sit down with your son or daughter and just have a browse around and say, you know, what grabs you fancy? What do you want to look at next? Next, um, To do that, maybe take it as an opportunity to have a bit of uh, bonding with them, um, just talking about their future. And they can be lovely conversations. Um, keep, keep talking um, with people around in the same way that you will with work experience. Um, this is a message that I'm sure you parents are <laughs> saying to your children, you know, use, use your time wisely and um, get off your mobile phones, you know, get off your games, whatever. But um, doing this research is real money in the bank in terms of research. So it's a really good way of still engaging with um, the virtual world, 
but maybe in a very productive way. And any research you do will help eliminate some ideas and help you gain awareness of others maybe. The bottom line being, sick formers can make informed decisions about what they would like to do next. And the final thing is, um, particularly for parents, please do talk to us. I know for a number of parents, um, this might be your first child going through the sick form. And, um, you know, it's a bit of a minefield, isn't it? You know, what's out there, but we're always here for you. And uh, I think you probably know if you've contacted us, we do aim to get in touch really quickly within 24 hours, wherever possible. Um, and we're very happy to chat with you informally or in a meeting um, and recommend that your son or daughter has a chat with Mrs. Hepworth, uh, who's a, just a fantastic uh, careers advisor. I'm going to tell, I'm going to say that publicly because she's, she's about to speak. <laughs> so, uh, and it's true. So um, th those are just some things there. So it's UCAS Hub. I think I left the website on there somewhere. It'd be a bit daft if I didn't. Wouldn't it? Let's have a little look. Do you know what? I didn't put it on there, did I? Anyway, put in UCAS Hub into Google. It'll soon come up. Um, and have a good browse around. Yeah, good luck with your viewing. Um, I did see Mrs. Hepworth on the participant list. I admitted her through the lobby. So Mrs. Hepworth, if you are there, um, you're on the floor, over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Denton. <laughs> okay, so can we go on to the next slide? Thank you. <clears throat> All right, and so these are my contact details. Um, I've also put the two social media links on there. Some students are following, because I can see that they are, but I know, um, Facebook is not quite as popular as it used to be, believe it or not, but I do know that they follow Instagram quite a bit. Um, so if you can ask your, or, you know, anybody can follow the Pathways links on social media, there's all sorts goes on there and everything that goes on there is also shared on the school social media. So there's plenty of information. Um, okay, thank you. Next slide. Okay, so these are just some of the deadlines for this year's Year 12s. Um, school deadlines, as I've put at the top, are earlier, and that's to give us chance to final check all applications before they're sent off, um, because the last thing we want is for a student to come to us after they've submitted their application and say, oh, miss, I'm really sorry, I've missed off this, this or this. And if I've already sent it to you, Cass, then it's a massive process for the student, because I can't do it. The contract with you, Cass, is with the student, not with school. Um, so it would mean them contacting all uh, contacting UCAS and possibly admissions um, at the universities they've applied for. So from the 9th of May, the advisor portal, which is what I use, that opens up. So I will be setting up everything for the students to then be able to start creating their accounts. OK, this year it's the 16th of May that students can log on to the Macaulay um, side of UCAS itself. This is directly on the UCAS website, not the UCAS hub. The two link together so they can see from one to the other ones. So that's not a problem. Um, and then um, if your son or daughter has decided to do their application really, really early, that's brilliant news because they obviously are well organised and they know what they want to do and things. Submission can start from the 5th of September. So the first day back at school, we can start sending off UCAS applications. The official deadline for early entry, so medicine, dentistry, Oxbridge, those sorts of applications is the 16th of October. Um, and that's a Monday. For school, it will be the Friday before, but that's on the next slide. I'll show that in a second. And then for all other applications, um, it's it's January. But again, that will be before Christmas to make sure we've got time to final check everything. The reason to have earlier deadlines, especially the final deadline, is because once students have sent their application, they feel so much better. The relief has gone and they can then focus on practice exams, revision, completing coursework, whatever it is. The number of students who come after they've sent their application and say, Miss, I know what you mean now about sending it off early. It is better. It does make me feel better. Then the second lot of deadlines are all to do with conservatoire, so music applications and things, and those deadlines um, are slightly different. So they don't actually open until the 12th of July. 
and then their applications have to be in by the 2nd of October. Because we don't have quite so many um, applying for conservatoires and a lot do per private applications, I'm not going to change the deadlines on those. Uh, but if anybody wants to get them in earlier, again, that's absolutely fantastic. Next slide, please, Mr. Shenton. OK, so these are um, this is the process. This is what students are going to be given this information. I'm just in the process of creating an information pack to send to students and I'm more than happy um, to share with parents as well. That's not a problem. So they can log on, as Mr Shenton said about the UCAS hub, they need to start doing their research and exploring now. There's a lot to look at. And as Mr Shenton said, it's not just about going to university. It's all their options. It's higher apprenticeships, degree apprenticeships. Um, it's job opportunities. There's all sorts on there now. Once applications open on the 16th of May, students will be told to use a buzzword to link their application to Macaulay. And it's really important they do that. I've already put the um, buzzword on here, but it won't work yet because it's not open. OK, we encourage all students to fill in the first section of the UCAS application because it's excellent practice for applying for jobs or completing application forms. They sometimes moan about it, but it really, really is good practice, um, you know, especially for those students who are looking at apprenticeships and things, because that is going to be the core thing is filling in online application forms. So it's excellent practice. And all students are going to write some sort of personal um, forgotten what it's just gone out my head Miss Shenton what's personal statements thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> some personal statement or other because that even if they're applying for jobs they're wanting to go into employment or training or whatever they're going to have to write a cover letter to go with their CVs so everybody's going to be producing some form of personal statement um one thing I would like your support in is encouraging your young person to check their emails every single day. This is so, so important, especially during the UCAS process, because if I have to send an, an application back for a correction or something, if they don't check their emails, then it's it's unlikely they're going to see what I'm asking them to do. And while we're talking about emails, it's easier if they use their personal email accounts. But the only thing we need to make sure with that is that it's appropriate and sensible um, because this is a professional application. It's not just writing an email to Mr Shenton or myself. This is a professional application they are making. So their email address needs to be very, very sensible. OK. The first draft of personal statements is really, really important, and that's the 14th of July. Every single student will have a draft completed by the 14th of July before we break up for the summer. Thank you, sir. Oh, I just pressed the wrong button. There we go. <laughs> How's that? Thank you. Oh, next one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> OK, so these are the deadlines. These are what the students are going to get uh, information about. So if they can sign up for the UCAS Hub today. They can look at university open days and virtual tours. OK, they the, some of the open days won't start until after May. And the reason for that is um, universities are still uh, dealing with this year's application. So nothing's going to start until after May. There are a lot of virtual tours that are still available and they can look at last year's. It doesn't have to be this year's so they can look at those. And again, I've put the deadlines on there um, for uh, for everybody to have a look at. Next slide, please, sir. OK, so Mr Shenton mentioned earlier about not going to uni. Um, there is a website called not going to uni and there is social media about not going to uni. There is so much information on there about doing internships, traineeships, apprenticeships. There's everything on there to do with employment training. Um, I would suggest students and parents as well, to be honest, have a look at the not going to uni website. Uh, because it really, really, really is good. 
On the UCAS Hub as well, there is a lot of examples of writing good and not so good personal statements. Um, but the key thing here is plagiarism. UCAS have a piece of software that can check every single sentence that a student writes to make sure it's not plagiarised. Everything has to be personal and their own work. That's the only other thing um, I would point out. Uh, the Complete University Guide, that gives rankings and reviews of current top um, universities if students are interested in finding out where their university is that they're thinking of going to and um, how well it's doing, what the progress of their students are on completion um, after they graduate. So that's a real, another useful website. Next one, please, sir. OK, so personal statements, these are just some pointers really for um, young people in, in when they start writing their personal stage statements. On the UCAS Hub, it will give you um, an example of how to structure personal statements, and that's really, really important. What they need to remember is they are selling themselves, OK? Their academic ability will be shown in their um, predicted grades, OK? And partly through their um, reference as well. But it's really important that they're talking about, as Mrs Jeffries said earlier about those essential skills, it's really important that they link their essential skills to the course. Um, so, so the two of them have to work together, really. What skills and qualities have they got that are going to make them that best student for that course? All of the resources um, are going to be on SharePoint and Teams for students to have a look at. So there are going to be things on there um, that students can tap into as we go through the process. Next slide, please, sir. I didn't realise I'd written this much. I do apologise, everybody. It's quality stuff, though, Mrs. Hepworth. I'm, I'm <laughs> fascinated. Who does? But my role as part of being Pathways Lead um, is that I have to make sure all students are aware of all the different options they've got. This happens both post 16 and post 18. Um, and students need to know that there are other things to do. Uh, university is not the be all and end all. You don't have to go to university to get the job that you want eventually. Learning is a lifelong thing and we need to make sure that our young people understand this. Um, so hopefully with the, the advice and guidance that they get within the next year will help them to make informed choices. OK, sir, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Hepworth, and I really do appreciate the time you've taken to put all this together. Um, it's really, really helpful. Um, just want to um, add about the open days. Uh, we do allow students to go out on open days to universities and um, other other environments, whether it's an employment or, or what have you, to have a look around. Um, however, most you most open days are now on weekends, so obviously. Um, we don't want students to miss too much lost learning time uh, for these things. So do aim for weekend opportunities or holidays. But if there is an open day and you can't avoid that it's in midweek, then we do allow students two days over the over the year. Uh, so use them sparingly if it involves missing school. Uh, we do support students and occasionally we have students that might need a little longer to explore things, particularly if um, the university is a long way away. Um, I've got one young lady going up to Glasgow um, very shortly, and that's, um, you know, that's going to take uh, a day or two uh, to get there and back and do all the things she needs to do. But uh, just talk to us about your needs, but do aim for um, out of school hours if possible. Um, we were hoping uh, Mrs. Mrs. Rainsbury might be able to join us tonight. She is unavailable with very good reason. She's sent her apologies. But um, I'll just give you a very quick update on year 12. Um, they're, they're a wonderful year group. We really do enjoy working with them. The step up uh, since they started has been absolutely amazing. Um, they are the best attenders in the school. So every day I get a report on uh, attendance across the year groups, year 12. And particularly this week, I think every, every day, they've been the best attenders across the school, which places them way above national average. Uh, way above the school and the regional and local average um, 
and high attendance really does correlate with high performance. Things move very quickly in a sick form. And if you miss one or two lessons, you really suffer for it afterwards. So we do say aim for 100 percent attendance. Any absence would be unavoidable. And I think of all the year groups, year 12 are living that out better than most. Um, obviously, there's always individuals that we, we need to work with and support. But um, if parents, you can just really emphasize uh, the importance of, of um, good attendance, that would be really helpful. Um, attitudes wise, again, very, very strong. Um, if, if folk that are interested in averages, um, on, on your reports, you get a one if it's excellent, you get a two if it's good, three and four, obviously, if things aren't quite so good. The average for the sick form is into the one point something. So uh, on average, all of our students are really good learners um, and we're always trying to help them see what excellent learning looks like. So when you get your next SAR report, I will be sending you a document that outlines what excellent learning, what the features of an excellent learner might be, what a good learner might be. So if you get a good for your attitude to learning, then you can see that that, yeah, fantastic. But the things that your students might want to do to try and lift that into really good adult standard learning practice. So that's that. Um, we're delighted that so many year 12s have got involved with lots of extracurricular opportunities so we've had loads of our students doing British Sign Language uh, which is a course we do over six weeks for two hours a week uh, we've had a group today and we've had two previous courses of first aid we've had students contribute to the the newsletter we've got a wonderful football team you know I could really go on and not to mention all the performing arts and the music and drama and all, all, all the rest of it some amazing commitment from our students and all sorts of things now that you're 13 are leaving in the, uh, in the next 10 or 11 weeks. Um, now's the time really that we're looking for a further step up from year 12 um, to take on things. So things like the, the sixth form newsletter, um, we don't want things to die a death, we want things to continue. So we'd really like a, an editorial team. Um, we want students to get involved. As Mrs. Hepworth and Mrs. Jeffrey said earlier, um, our students will need to demonstrate initiative, teamwork, communication skills. And there's loads of opportunities to do that in the sick form. Um, if there isn't something already in place that your students would like to do, then we always encourage them to take the initiative and say, can I set something up? That's how chess club started just recently. And that's really, really popular. And we've um, got together with a chess organization who've given us some chess balls. You know, things really do sprout massively when our students take the lead. So if you can encourage your son or daughter to um, get involved in some way, that would be really, really good. I'm aware of time and I want to have a question and answer session. So I'll leave that in terms of the pastoral side. Um, oh, there was one thing. Um, I'll, I'll be emailing your 12 and 13 students about a change to the way that they access support for Mrs. Rainsbury. Um, she's a brilliant, um, quite inspirational pastoral leader and very generous with her time. However, uh, we've got to a point where lots of students, um, you know, uh, feel that they, they can knock on the door and get a response straight away. It's becoming a bit unmanageable. We get queues of people outside of Mrs. Rainsbury's office. And I think uh, part of my job is to help her manage those demands. So I'll be emailing all of our students to say there'll be times in the week when you can book meetings with Mrs. Rainsbury. There'll be some times when there'll be an open door policy. And there'll be some times when she's just blocked off because there's business that needs to be done on behalf of the sick form. So just look out for that. And um, that'd be really helpful for students to uh, just manage their own as well as Mrs. Rainsbury's workload. OK. Right, we'll have a little question and answer session. So I think the best way to do that is, in fact, if I collapse that for a moment, um, if you do have any questions, maybe put a raised hand on the uh, on the reactions section, and then you can unmute and ask your question. So if you have a question. I'm hoping reactions are allowed. If reactions aren't possible, just unmute yourself and ask anyway. How, we, how about we do that? <laughs> I 
I'll just check that we've been able to disable mic for okay. I think everybody should be able to speak. Are there any questions? Somebody's unmuted themselves. There we go. There's one actually. Jesse got a hand up. Yeah. Uh, yes, Jesse, um, would you like to unmute yourself and ask the question? I'll just check that Jesse can actually. I don't think you're muted, Jesse. Are you able to unmute yourself and um, ask your question? If you just look at the top right hand side of the screen, there's a, a little icon that says. I think I've just pressed the wrong button there. Hang on a second. Mm. I think I've just unmuted. Maybe there's no questions. Um, Jesse's That's hand has gone not. down. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, if, if we're having a bit of a technical issue on that and people can't unmute themselves, then um, do feel free to email us uh, at any time. Um, we're happy to respond. And if it's a general question, we can um, give that feedback when we give you a, a copy to the, a copy of the, this link. Uh, to the downloaded uh, recording of this presentation. So just a final thank you for me. Thank you so much, Mrs. Jeffries and Mrs. Hepworth for all the planning and effort that went into tonight. Thank you, Mrs. Sables for sharing with us. Um, and uh, thank you very much parents for your uh, support and for trusting us with your wonderful sons and daughters. It really is a pleasure every day to go into school. So um, if you are able to unmute yourself, you, you may sort of shout out a goodbye to everybody. Um, and until next time, I'll see you. Bye. Good night. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thumbs up. Thank you. Bye. Wonderful. Mm, just one more. H. Oh, she's leaving now. Brilliant. Well, thank you both. That's um, that was That's amazing. Fine. Yeah. I think it's good, it. it's good we recorded that one because it's um, not that many attended tonight. But I think if it goes on a link. That